I received a lot of great viewer suggestions, so I'm adding final details to the abandoned miniature lab in a book. I'm making a light switch and I really love the look of this 1950s version. I have these grommets that can be used in scrapbooking. I'm cutting off the tabs to make them look like the circles that go around the switches. I'm using a skinny stick as the metal back plate for the light switch. I'm replicating the raised portion of the metal using a bit of scrap cardstock. I'm using scissors that are entirely too big to cut a tiny semicircle from each corner for the screw holes. I really wanted to replicate the tiny flathead screws and I came up with a great method. I'm using this cheap precision tip bottle from Amazon to add a little dot to each corner, but you could also apply this little dab with a toothpick. I used a hair dryer to form a skin so the surface is dry. Using the thin blade of my craft knife, I'm pressing down and creating a line for the center of the screw. This will be easier to see when I paint it. The switch I'm copying has 8 switches, but I think that would be excessive for the small space, so I'm only making 3. I've been able to fit a lot into this 112 scale diorama, but the book is only 2 and a quarter inches deep. I'm using paperclip to make the switches. I cut all 3 pieces of paperclip, but once I started adding them, I realized they were too long. I should have cut one first and tested the length before cutting all 3. I'm attaching newly cut shorter pieces of paper clip using white glue. I'm positioning two of the switches in the on position and one in the off position. I kept the switches intentionally too short because I'm adding more detail on the end using these caviar beads that are intended for decorating fingernails. I used more white glue and added a tiny bead to the end of each switch. I'm adding the first layer of color and also helping keep all of these pieces together with a mixture of brown paint and Mod Podge. I want the metal to look old and tarnished, so I'm mixing a bit of copper with bronze. I'm retaining a lot of the brown base coat by dry brushing the metallic tone. I'm adding a wash to the surface using black acrylic paint mixed with rubbing alcohol. This will look a lot more subtle as it dries and it will make the metal look tarnished and old. To further highlight the details, I'm dry brushing a very thin layer of silver. The silver really brought it over the top and emphasized the teeny tiny screws in every corner. I'm adding the switch to the right side of the room because I have plans for the left wall. I printed this image of a calendar I found on Google. The text is so teeny tiny, but it's a calendar from 1951. I protected the image with a coat of matte Mod Podge and now I'm adding yellow ochre paint for age. I like adding a coat of Mod Podge because I can diffuse the brush lines using a damp paper towel without affecting the ink. This calendar only shows three months at a time, so I'm layering three pieces of paper under it to give it dimension and realism. Instead of adding glue to the entire piece of paper, I'm only adding glue to the middle so the corners will be free. I'm using a brown marker to cover up the really stark white edges from cutting this computer paper. The corner of the ceiling is collapsed in this abandoned miniature lab, so I'm curling up the corners of the pieces of paper to make it look like it's been affected by the moisture. The white printer paper is visible from different angles, so I'm using some watered down brown paint to age all of the layers that show. To add the look of mold, I'm splattering paint from a toothbrush. I don't want the mold on her face, so I'm masking it off with a scrap piece of paper. When comparing it to this calendar I printed too close to the edge, you can really see the difference. This miniature lab belongs to either a scientist or a doctor, so I printed this miniature certificate for the wall. 
To avoid having to make a frame entirely from scratch, I'm looking through my collection of laser cutouts. These are all the pieces I've saved from various dollhouse miniature kits I've assembled. This piece will be perfect once I cut this side to be the same thickness as the other sides. I get a lot of questions about my miter shears and I actually don't recommend mine. The blades on mine have been dull for a long time, so I recommend a pair with replaceable blades. I'm painting the frame gold starting with a yellow ochre base. If I use this cheap paint directly on the wood, it would just look like slightly shimmery wood color. I'm gluing the frame directly to the paper and using Dimensional Magic from Mod Podge to look like the glass. If you don't have the product I'm using, you could also use trash plastic as glass. I didn't age the certificate before sealing it up because it's protected by the glass. This product has a high water content, so it makes the paper ripple, but we'll see how it looks when it dries. I made this hanging light fixture using paper, q-tips, and packing tape, but there's no electricity supplying the bulbs with power. I'm looking through my collection of cords and strings to find something to use as the wires. I could use a water and glue mixture to stiffen up some of these strings, but I have this scrap piece of actual dollhouse miniature wire I'll use instead. I cut a piece of wire a little longer than I think I'll need. I'm using some matte Mod Podge and brown paint to paint the wire. I'm using one of these rivets at the end of the wire to attach to the light fixture. The size of the wire is a lot smaller than the inner dimensions of the rivet, so I'm beefing it up with a strip of paper. This will help the wire fit more snugly and it'll hold right away as the glue dries. I cut a piece of scrap mat board to glue the rivet to. It's a lot easier to glue the rivet to the mat board rather than directly to the light fixture, and the square of mat board will add a little more detail. I'm using another cheap metallic paint to give this color, so I'm starting with a base coat of dark gray this time so the silver will pop. I'm adding a black wash and I'll leave that to dry while I finish the certificate. The dimensional magic is completely dry and the paper is flat again. I'm cutting the paper as close to the frame as I can, but the paper is still visible a tiny bit, so I'm coloring the edges with a gold marker so there isn't a thin line of white showing. I don't want to go too crazy aging this frame, so I'm adding a small amount of black paint just to the top, a little on the sides, and a small amount on the inside bottom. I'm using a damp paper towel to remove some of the paint and make it look more irregular and less intentionally painted. I attached the frame and the calendar with some tacky wax. The cord is dry and I'm gluing it to the end of the light fixture that's closest to the wall. To make it easier to glue the wire to the ceiling, I'm stripping off the coating with my wire strippers. I could have glued this wire in place without these pliers, but I just want to justify owning them since I haven't used them. I glued the end to the light fixture and made a small hole in the ceiling using a thumbtack. I twisted the tiny wires and shoved them in the hole. I'm making a combination blackboard and corkboard to fill the space behind the desk. I'm using some cereal box, black construction paper, some laser cutouts, and this cork. This is really thin cork with an adhesive backing. I bought this product for making bricks in a future video. If you don't have it, you can just use cereal box to make your bulletin board since most of the surface gets covered up with notes anyway. Most of the bulletin board will be cork, but I'm making a small section of chalkboard on the right. To keep the project simple and avoid taking measurements, I attached the three outer pieces of frame first. Then I cut the chalkboard piece and the cork board, minus the piece of wood that goes in the middle and across the bottom. I'll attach the chalkboard and cork board once the frame is finished. 
I'm keeping it really simple by using a marker to color this frame and to age it a bit I'm going over the whole thing with a light dry brushing of ivory paint. Dry brushing is often used to highlight details but I also like to use it to subdue colors and make something look older and faded. I removed the protective backing from the cork board and stuck it down with its own adhesive. The cork board looks brand new, so I'm dry brushing that as well as the chalkboard. I want the chalkboard to look like someone has erased it and left some chalk residue behind. I googled chalkboard science to get some ideas of things I can draw on the chalkboard. For every project I do, I google reference images because it helps my creativity and gives me ideas. One day I wasn't feeling very creative, but I still wanted to do something for my miniature hobby. So I printed out a bunch of Etsy files, cut them out, and colored the edges with marker. So now on a day like today, when I'm creative and the ideas are flowing, I can just add these pieces to my work instead of having to stop to do a time-consuming, tedious task. It may seem like I'm attaching paper at random, but I wanted to add the water damaged pieces at the bottom and mix in a couple varieties of subdued colors and pattern. I'm adding little spots of glue everywhere I think a thumbtack would be. You can cut off the head of straight pins to use as thumbtacks, but I'm using some caviar beads. I chose red so they'll stand out and I added some extra caviar beads off to the left to look like thumbtacks that haven't been used yet. To make it look like this doctor or scientist ran out of space, I added some more notes to the right of it. I'm making a tiny piece of chalk using this polystyrene rod I got from my local hobby store. I'm resting the tiny piece of chalk on the wooden frame. I looked up a reference image to make a 1950s style chalkboard eraser which looks pretty similar to modern ones. I made a guess at the size and used some sandpaper to round the edges. I'm keeping it really simple and using coffee stir stick for the top. Before I glue them together, I'm giving them some color with a few layers of paint. I'm coloring them before assembly to eliminate the risk of pale glue spots and also to avoid having to wait for the glue to dry before painting. Someone gifted me a bunch of this felt, which is great to use for making miniature carpet. I'm using it to make the eraser portion of the eraser. I used tacky glue to attach the felt so I can trim it to size right away. I'm making a simple box to fill this empty space. I cut a scrap piece of wood so it's about the same size as an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of paper in 112 scale. I'm gluing it to a paper bag making sure there's enough overhang to wrap around the edges. Instead of wrapping this block like a present, I'm trying a different technique so I don't have any visible seams or folds. I pushed the sides in, pinched the corners, and added glue to the edges. I did this on all four sides, so I end up with this tab hanging off of each corner. Without waiting for the glue to dry, I'm cutting off all of the tabs. Since the paper is wet from the glue, rolling the corners on the table gets rid of the seams. Now I'm making a simple lid. The paper bag is really flimsy, so I'm using some scrap cardstock to give it some structure. I cut the cardstock to be the same size as the top of the box and now I'm folding in all of the paper edges. This lid will be similar to a shoe box so I'm gluing some strips around the edges but I want to make sure there's space for the lid to fold. I glued four strips leaving a tiny gap between the strips and the top of the lid. I'm cutting a tab at the two short ends so I can fold it under and glue it. Making the box this way helped me avoid measuring and planning, which are my two least favorite things. To make the box more interesting, I'm gluing the lid on crooked and adding some papers inside. This is 112 scale office paperwork, but I accidentally printed it extremely tiny, so I'm using it to look like receipts or notes inside of this box. 
One of the downsides to using a wooden block as the base is the box looks really perfect. To make it look older and fit in with this abandoned space, I dented the lid. I'm using some watered down black paint to make it look like there's water damage at the bottom of the box. It looks a lot more subtle when it's dry. I have this Krizenbon kit for bathroom accessories and I'm using the smallest towel rack. I'm adding a towel rack to the right side of the book near the sink. I love Krizenbon kits because they're true to 112 scale and look realistic. They're also really inexpensive since they're made from plastic. I used an old t-shirt to make a couple towels. Full size fabric doesn't hang well so I'm using a watered down glue mixture to hold a draped shape over the rod. To make it look like a second towel fell off of the rod onto the dirty floor, I glued a towel down and I'm adding some more of the glue mixture to hold its shape. While the two towels are still wet from the glue mixture, I'm adding a little bit of watered down black paint. To help the towel dry in the right position, I added a cheap clip from the Dollar Tree. To make the towel look dirty like the rest of the floor, I added a little extra glue and sprinkled on some miniature crushed pine cones. To make the space look more abandoned, I'm using this used dryer sheet to make cobwebs. I can't remember where I learned this trick, but it's important to use a used dryer sheet because a clean one won't pull apart as well. I'm gently tugging at the dryer sheet so it looks less uniform and giving it a trim and gluing it in a couple spots. I'm attaching it with a fabric tack and it's really important to let the glue dry before you start stretching and manipulating it. While that dries, I'm gluing a broken microscope to the floor. I accidentally broke it while adding museum wax to help hold it down while the glue dries. But I think it looks better in three pieces, so happy accident. I'm using a little bit of white dry brushing to mellow out the black paint. To disguise the brush lines, I'm using my fingertips to tap away the paint. Behind the scenes, I broke the microscope off the desk and put my arm in super glue. The glue holding down the cobwebs is definitely dry by now, so I'm adding some extra glue in areas I want to tack the ends to. This can be a bit fiddly, so just stretch the dryer sheet until it looks how you like. I used either Fabri-Tac or white glue to tack it down. A toothpick was really helpful for stretching the dryer sheet and tacking it in place. I'm adding something a little extra to the cobweb on the left side. I bought this faux snow from Dollar Tree last year and I've been regretting it ever since because they are a disastrous staticky mess. I'm using one on this cobweb to look like a sack of spider eggs. I love to create tiny simple details like this so the more someone looks at a miniature I make, the more details they find. Now I'm adding some details to this empty corner. I'd like to hang a notice near the sink and I'm deciding between these two. I chose the rectangle because I think it fits the space better and the yellow was a bit too vibrant. I'm making a light fixture to mount under the shelf and I want to keep it simple. I keep the solo cup of wooden scrap pieces near my desk and I'm using this little piece of trim to make the light fixture. I think it's a little bit too long so I cut a small amount off of the end. I chose this piece of trim because it's shaped like a U, so it already has a top, a back, and a front. I'm using some scraps of cardstock to make the ends. I'm covering up the underside using some trash plastic. My patience allowed the glue to dry for two minutes before cutting off the excess paper. I want this light fixture to look really smooth like metal. I could have used the wood glue trick to make it look really smooth, but then I would have to wait for it to dry, so I'm using some spackle in the ends where the paper meets and to fill the wood grain. I'm covering up the bottom with the plastic, but I think it'll look too dark in there if I don't paint it first. 
The paint raised the wood grain, so I'm repeating the steps. Full-size wood grain on a metal light fixture would affect the realism in my diorama. I chose this plastic because it makes things look blurry from a distance, but up close it's too see-through. I'm using a bit of Mod Podge and sprinkling on some black caviar beads. I'm sealing it with white glue so it'll dry clear and putting it under a 123 block. I can't even imagine how many tens of thousands of caviar beads I have, but I don't want them to go to waste, so I'm picking them up with my Mod Podge brush. The caviar beads look like dead flies, and I love it. I'm sealing the light fixture with gloss Mod Podge and adding some brown chalk pastels into the wet Mod Podge to see if I like the effect. I tried the technique on the back in case I don't like it. I added slightly less to the front and sides, focusing on the bottom and the corners. This is a modern light switch I printed on my resin 3D printer. I accidentally shipped the corner. I'm cutting off all of the edges so I can use just the switch on my light fixture. I don't want to obscure the details of the light switch by painting it black, so I'm painting it dark yellow. This makes it look like plastic that has aged over the years from UV light exposure. I almost made it an entire video without using my dirty down rust. I'm adding it to the edges where the pieces of metal would meet one another. This light fixture will be mounted under the shelf, so I'm adding a fake shadow using black chalk pastels. It looks strange now, but once it's installed, it looks great. I'm adding a thin line of rust across the entire light fixture where it meets the shelf. I made a really simple electrical cord by attaching two small squares of paper with some thread and painting it. Thank you. 